Hello and welcome back. Now in a previous video, I showed you a sample of the 2223 Data Draft Player Hub, what it is, how to use it to make better decisions in fantasy, and today we're gonna to look at the companion to that player hub, the goaltending hub. Now a lot of people, myself included, struggle with finding solid goaltending, especially with my G2 and G3 options. This is something that I've talked about on the channel a lot. I've gotten a lot of questions about it, and today I'm gonna to attempt to solve this problem. So what we have here is an attempt to combine all of the things that I talk about on this channel when it comes to goaltending. And you'll recall in the goalie targets video in the preseason, I listed a set of criteria for a G1 in fantasy. 50 starts, above a 915 save percentage, on a good defensive team, on a team that wins, etc. One thing I didn't mention in that video was the skill of the goaltender in question, which is a bit difficult to quantify and to take into consideration without a tool like this goaltending hub. So let's look at the elements. And just like the player hub, you have a search bar at the top. You can scroll through all of the goalies, and this is a little bit more manageable, seeing as how there's a lot fewer goalies than players in the league. Um, so you obviously have this, and then you have the regular goalie stats, wins, goals against, save percentage, shutouts, total saves, expected goals against, and goals saved above expected. Um, now, I tried to add goals saved above expected because it does give us a little bit of that skill component uh, in a numerical format. So we can kind of quantify how well a goalie is playing compared to the level of shots that they're facing or the types of chances that they're facing. Um, when we look at the percentiles, you see a lot of the same stuff, but we have here games played percentile, which is essentially starts, but you also get uh, fantasy points for any appearance. So that's why I added games played. You have wins, you have goals against, save percentage, you have uh, goals saved above expected, and then you have team expected goals against per game, and that is the defensive component. So uh, I mentioned obviously that you want a goalie who's playing for a good team defense, uh, and that's also going to help you get a lot of wins. So that's the element there that is often left out when it comes to fantasy goaltending. You don't see a lot of uh, people talking about the strength of the team defense. And this is the component that helps to make better decisions in fantasy. Because obviously, if you only looked at stuff like goals saved above expected, you would think of Karel Vimelka as a really good goaltender. But when you factor in his team defense and a lot of the other metrics, he falls a little bit further down the list. So... The rating that you see up here uh, is the average of all of these percentiles. So obviously, um, you know, if you're that you're looking at Carter Hart, he's in the 93rd percentile in terms of goals saved above expected, which means he's very good and he's getting a bunch of starts. He's got 97 percent more starts than anybody else in the league, uh, but he's obviously not playing for a good team. They're not very good defensively. Uh, and then his save percentage has taken a hit recently. Uh, his goals against has taken a little bit of a hit compared to where it was early in the season. So that's why his rating has fallen a little bit. But uh, if you'll notice, if you look all the way to the right, he's not even on that Yahoo list because it doesn't really factor in some of these things. So you are getting a little bit of a boost because of how much he starts uh, and obviously his his skill level, his goal saved above expected. Um, but if you took those out, he would not be on this list because his team defense is pretty bad and his numbers have taken a hit because of that. Um, but let's take a look at some of the uh, surprising things that I noticed when I was playing around with this a little bit. Um, Pyotr Kachekov hasn't played a ton this year, but he's been incredible. So let's take a look at Kachekov. I'm just going to scroll down because it's easier than typing. And if you look at this, his team defense is excellent. So you obviously want exposure to Carolina goaltending. Um, but then on top of that, he's saving more than he's expected. 11.2 saves above expected. Uh, his save percentage is phenomenal at a 928. His goals against is even better at two. Uh, and then his win percentile is pretty good. It would probably be higher if he had started more. His starts is his lowest uh, percentile at 53%. And that could potentially change uh, given the fact that Freddie Anderson is coming back soon. Uh, we'll have to wait and see as to how that plays out in terms of the usage for Kitschekov. But thus far, it's been very impressive. And he's rocketed to the top of this list because of that. Uh, another guy I just wanted to mention, I, we went over Carter Hart. He was another one of these kind of anomalies that, uh, you know, was explained by this, uh, this goaltending hub. Akira Schmid just recently got sent down, but uh, it's the same type of thing. If you look at the team defense, uh, that's boosting a lot of his numbers. He doesn't have a ton of starts, which obviously brings him down. Uh, but even still, even the fact that he has uh, fewer starts, he's still relatively high on this list. 
because of the strength of his defense. His save percentage is really excellent, 932, and he's got a two goals against average as well. So this can kind of give you a sense of waiver options. Uh, a lot of these guys at the top are owned up. Olmark, obviously, Shesterkin, uh, Hellebuck, um, you know, Markstrom even further down the list. Let's take a look at Markstrom because I've been getting a lot of comments about Markstrom and people worrying about him. Uh, so obviously the team defense is not bad, not great. It's, you know, 52 percentile, um, you know, it could be better. You would expect more from a Daryl Sutter coach team. Uh, he is getting the starts, which is why he's still fantasy relevant. Uh, I believe he started all four games last week when I was expecting Vladar, Vladar to get a couple of them. His win percentile is not bad, um, but obviously you'd like to see better save percentage and better goals against, and hopefully that will come because his goal save above expected is pretty decent at 4.4, uh, 70% or better than 70% of the rest of the goaltenders on this list. So uh, there is some hope there in terms of this metric and the team defense. Uh, if either of these two components can bring up and boost his save percentage and goals against, this could be a buy low opportunity. Um, but it is mainly uh, factoring in his start volume and his win totals. Uh, so if you're in a points league, that's how you can kind of read into this. If you're not, if you don't care as much about goals against and save percentage, uh, if you're getting, you know, five points for a win, then maybe you want to stick with Jacob Markstrom because he's still getting wins and he's getting a bunch of starts. Um, so this is mainly, uh, I, I want to say the player hub was mainly for category leagues. This is a little bit more uh, diverse in terms of how you can use it. You just have to kind of keep your your point format in mind when you're using this. Because if you, again, if you get five points for a win, then you're going to obviously target guys with a higher win percentile. Um, one other guy I wanted to go over was Stuart Skinner because he's basically taken the net uh, in Edmonton. And Edmonton isn't a great defensive team. They're not a bad defensive team. They're pretty much right there with Calgary. Uh, you can see his save percentage is right at the threshold of what I was describing you want in a G1, a 915, which is basically, uh, you, you can read this, any other goaltender should be above 74% uh, in save percentage to be ownable as a G1. Now, his goals against isn't as good, 2.8. His win percentile isn't as good because Jack Campbell gets a bunch of starts. His games played is about the same because of that. But when you compare this to Campbell, it becomes clear why he's getting the number one role at this point. Uh, Campbell has the same exact uh, defensive ranking. He's 10 goals below expected. So his goal saved above expected percentile is really low. Uh, his save percentage is dastardly low. Like that's abysmal. You can't really own him at that point. Same with his goals against at above four, 4.1. Um, but he does get the wins. So again, if you're in a point format, uh, with, you know, waiting for wins, um, that could potentially still be a waiver option for you. He's definitely not a guy I would want to own all season long, but this is just a little sample of how you can use this tool. I'll be updating it every couple of days. Um, you know, it's, it's not automatically updating. I have to manually update it, but, uh, I'll be making some tweaks and adjustments to this as well. And you can find this tool and the 2223 data draft player hub in the Patreon link in the description below. Uh, for $3 a month, you get access to both player hubs and all of the visualizations I use on the channel. Uh, for $5 a month, you get all of that, plus access to our community Discord uh, channel, uh, which has a lot of really knowledgeable fantasy owners in there. Uh, everybody's uh, covering a different team, kind of giving us a little bit different perspective, uh, staying on top of trends, injury notes, things like that. It's a very useful tool, and pretty much everybody in the Discord has gotten some value out of being in it. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys a quick sense of how you can use this 2223 goaltending hub. Um, but that's going to do it. And I appreciate you watching and sticking with it to the end. And I'll see you in the next one.